Good day, I'm Kruer. Baxters and I are presenting today, but I will be taking care of all the talking. I'm going to talk to you about our experiences with deploying and developing a graphical Julia application written for the video game Celeste. Owing to the nature of the product and the target demographic, we simply can't just tell people to install a package. But let's start with some background. Celeste is a 2D platforming game released on the 25th of January in 2018. I played the game when it released and I found it quite amusing and I liked it. So I was wondering if it was possible to get some custom levels for it, some custom maps. And that's when we started. A week after release, I made a very simple map decoder in Python. And just for fun, Vexodos ported it to Julia, which was at version 0.6 at the time, and it resulted in a 20 times speed up. That's quite significant. So we decided to continue using Julia for the project and we created what is known as Maple. So Maple is a very simple layer for the map encoder and decoder. But the Celeste community, even though they just got custom levels, they weren't really keen to code levels. They wanted a more visual approach. So we started working on a front end for Maple, which was also written in Julia. We looked around for the options at the time, and there weren't really many in 2018, but we settled with gtk.jl. So now we have Maple, which is the backend map decoding and encoding. We have the windowing framework gtk, and when we combine these, we get the application, which we ended up calling Ahorn. So Ahorn is just a front end for Maple that allows you to view, edit, and create your own levels. But what was it like creating this program in Julia? As mentioned earlier, the performance was incredible compared to Python, where every data structure now was incredibly fast and easy to work with. The metaprogramming allowed us to make a very easy to use plugin system, which removed a lot of the tedium and redundantness of defining all of the types necessary uh, to match the game properly with bindings. And just writing code in Julia itself is very easy and it's very fast to develop in time-wise. So the performance was also pretty good during development, but we had some challenges when we deployed it. So the main points were that many of our users use Windows. Many of our users had never really used a terminal before. The audience is quite young, given that it's a video game. And many of the users also have extremely old hardware. So the main common problem here is that you can't ask lay people to just run commands in a terminal. Since terminal commands wouldn't work, we had to find a different solution. So we looked into binary packaging at the time, which was not a feasible option. So we went with, with plan B, a Windows batch file. Sadly, these have the reputu reputation of being a little bit shady, but it may do in the start. So once we had the batch file ready and we were ready to ship out the project to more users, we encountered a few issues that continued to be pain points. The first one was GTK and Cairo had a really hard time building their native libraries. And most of the time this needed manual commands to fix it. Another issue was that packages would just stop downloading for absolutely no reason and fail the whole installation process. In terms of the installation itself, it sadly used a unreasonable amount of size, and it was unreasonably slow even on high-end Windows computers, where it can range from everywhere to 1 to 10 hours to install. And the startup speed wasn't exactly something to be happy about either. It ended up being that most people would have the program load for anywhere between 1 and 10 minutes, even on high-end computers. It was especially bad on Windows due to the problems with NTFS, etc. But everything slowly got better. With Julia 1.0, the amount of random download failures went down drastically. And even better, with Julia 1.3, we got the artifact system. And the artifact system fixed a lot of our issues with GTK and Cairo not building their native libraries. So this took care of probably 80% of our installation issues. And we were quite happy with this and thought the project was worth continuing to work on. So since performance was still terrible, we decided we could start improving our own code. And due to 
uh, Tim Holy's profile view tool and easy access to the Julia IR, we managed to find the pain points in the application and we improved it and ended up with a near three times improvement in runtime performance, which is great. But even today, there are still problems with this. 80% of execution time is spent in Cairo or GTK, which is out of our hands and we can't really optimize too much around it. Julia 1.6 drastically increased package load speed, which sadly didn't help too much for Ahorn's sake. The loading time is still around one to 10 minutes and most of it is spent creating GTK windows or warming up the GTK engine. The latter would likely be due to issues in GTK.jl. I made a very simple hello world application in both Python and in Julia. And with some testing, the Python implementation started in less than a second while the Julia implementation started in roughly 10 seconds. But where are we now with Ahorn itself? Installation issues have become a lot better with the 1.01 and 1.3 update. Installation speed is still quite terrible, but we hope that it may improve with the registry download change in Julia 1.7. We have a new installation method, which is faster, but involves Windows virtual hard disks. And sadly, the installation size is still quite enormous. But how was it using Julia in hindsight? We don't think it was a bad idea. Very few languages would have allowed us to code a program of this size in such a short amount of time. And very few languages would have allowed us to make a plugin system as powerful as the one we have, with great adoption even by beginner coders. But it can always get better. Here are a number of things we think could improve in future versions of Julia or with Julia packages. GDK.jl and Cairo.jl are sadly not on par with the Python bindings and can still be improved. Having the option to use more or different or just better UI frameworks would be great, as GTK, for example, does not play super nice with Windows. The time to first plot, window, whatever you want to call it, can still be brought down, but Julia 1.6 is a very promising start for it. A way to reduce the installation size would also be nice. But the biggest thing that would help, in our opinion, is an easy way to install or to build, install, and execute a complete application without going through all the hoops we're doing today. But that's it for us. Thank you for having us. I would like to give a special thanks to Jade for making Everest, the Celeste mod loader, and Olympus, the Celeste mod manager, and the new Ahorn installation method. If you want more information about Ahorn or Maple, you can find it on the GitHub pages. And if you want to talk more about Celeste modding in general, you can find a Discord link in the readme of the Ahorn and the Maple repository. Feel free to ask any questions you have. Thanks for having us.